Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, good. Okay, let's go. Are we live? Are we live, Dustin? We are. Good. Uh, Do you want me to skip the theme song? No, go to the fucking theme song. I'm in a bad mood anyway. It's over 30 minutes late, you know. Okay. Hey, everybody. Team Gary B. Just text your questions and no stressing because you're sipping tea. Team Gary B. Good morning. Uh, it's Tea with Gary B. Uh, today is Thursday, uh, April 9th. I'm in a tricky mood. A lot of business stuff going on. I had to push this to 9 15 because I had a business call. Uh, and uh, and that went to 9.30 because the call needed to go to 9.30. Uh, but I'm here, and I'm, you guys are going to change my mood and my mindset, and I want to give some shout-outs to Chad Hanna, uh, Christine, uh, Lauren Lindsay. It's fun. You guys don't get to see me in the zone uh, often because usually I have a transition, but, you know, listen, when you're navigating a thousand-person company during a pandemic... There's a ton of shit going on, so big shout out to all my operational CEOs who are on the front lines who are trying to navigate and protect jobs and 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 navigate this storm because this is a fucking storm. So, you know, uh, that's uh, that's where we're at. Fucking operating, you know, entrepreneurship is super cool when things are great and you look happy on fucking Instagram. But in real life, we're we're working out here. And I've been through 9-11, I've been through the Great Recession, and, uh, and, this, is a, and this is a tricky one, because it's global, it's at scale, and so, real stuff. But I'm up for the fucking challenge, because I'm a fucking wartime general, and now I'm ready to fucking go. Let's go. Justin, what's good? What's up, Gary? How you doing? I'm doing unbelievable. For everybody who's watching right now, it's just, you know what? This is why I fucking love tea with Gary V. I didn't know Sully was going to be the uh, Silly. Excuse me, was going to be the uh, the first guest. Uh, Silly is one of the great uh, athletes in our world. He is a superstar on our Minnesota Rocker uh, esports Call of Duty team. Uh, he has been performing. Our team just has been performing. We've been stunning them. We're not stunned, <laughs> but in the Call of Duty league this year, no question. Um, given the history, if you know that league, uh, we were not. Uh, perceived to be a team that is in the upper echelon or there was unknowns. Um, we were not one of the kind of hype teams going into the season, but we have made some real fucking noise. No short part because of this man and his incredible teammates. So it's so weird to be an owner of a team and have an athlete on your team. And here it is, you know, not just, not exactly how I pictured it as a kid. I thought it'd be a football player and I'd be old as shit, but I'm enjoying it tremendously. I'm proud of you. And how are you? How are you doing? How's the family? Um, doing great. Family's uh, nice and safe. Um, you know, just practicing from home and uh, getting ready for our tournament this weekend. Yeah, we're we're back on, which is amazing, and I'm excited about that. So, uh, what? Uh, how's the season been going so far? Before you go into your question, um, the season for us has been going uh, pretty well. We've kind of proved to be a championship contender team, and you know that's awesome for us because we felt that way before the season. And now we're you actually did. showing it. Um, my question for you is, you know, since most traditional sports are on pause right now, um, what are you watching more of? You know, if you saw the first couple of minutes uh, of this uh, episode, I'm not watching shit because unfortunately, you know, I've made my bed and now I have to sleep in it. I've got huge responsibility. I'm working late into the night every night, uh, looking at every angle to grow our business and maintain our business um, and and navigate this storm. You know, we have a lot of, we're in a business where, you know, you've got a lot of people who are struggling to pay their bills. You've got people that are reducing their scopes. I just, I'm just dealing with a ton of shit. So right now, unfortunately, not even the news, not even music. I'm I'm going at it 15 hours a day, kind of going hard on you know when you're a captain of a boat and the seas get rough. You know when it's chill and it's in front of you, you can go in the back and hang out with the patrons and maybe have a glass of champagne. Right now, I'm hand on wheel trying to navigate it. However because I'm always paying attention through osmosis and doing what I do. This is really my one release each day. Um, I'm very aware of what's going on with Twitch numbers and YouTube numbers and very aware that our sport is in a disproportionate position to succeed uh, 
the other sports, you know, Ronnie, big shout out to Ronnie 2K, like 2K is doing, you know, ESPN, you know, like this is, this is our time. And I think this weekend, the viewership is going to be extraordinary. Uh, if we in our league and I and you, we promote properly and let people uh, know it's on. Actually, on that point, I want to let everybody know because a lot of people are about to become Minnesota Rocker fans because they're fans of me and they're like, fuck it, I'm going to watch this weekend. Where can everybody catch this weekend's tournament? Uh, this weekend's tournament is going to be on twitch.tv slash COD League. Um, all the matches will be broadcasted there and uh, we play at 7 p.m. East on Friday against our rivals, uh, the Chicago Huntsmen. So this is a big one for everybody who's watching. Uh, Hector, an OG in the Call of Duty uh, circles, and I became friends years ago. He's a part owner and GM of, uh, of Chicago. This is a huge battle. We, we talk a lot of trash on opening weekend in Minnesota, on social. I'm super fired up for it, and I can't wait to see what you do, Silly. You've been, you've been remarkable, brother. I'm, you know, I continue to, obviously, every week get more educated on the nuances of the game, and uh, I'm just blown away by your skills, and I appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. Thank Silly, you, Taylor, 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 Taylor's asking, asking what kind of gameplay. Explain the format. Um, like the tournament format? Mm-hmm. So, no, the uh, gameplay, the games you're playing within the five. Okay, so the, so the games we're playing, um, we're strictly Call of Duty on the Minnesota Rocker. Um, we're in an eight-team tournament format this weekend. Um, there's two separate pools, and uh, we pretty much just broadcast our uh, skills in hard point, search and destroy, and domination. There it is. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> it's awesome. Everybody, follow Minnesota Rocker. Dustin, get the uh, handle from Team Gary V. If it's on the top of your head, let's get the Twitter and Instagram handle up here. Let's make sure everybody who's watching right now becomes a Rocker fan. Minnesota, baby. Justin, thank you. Thank you so much, and uh, thanks soon. for having me on later. Of course, silly. Take care. Love that. Good sur- Thank you, team, for that surprise. Didn't know he was going to be on. Super cool. I like the little surprises in the beginning of the shows. It's been really fun. Let's keep this going. Kara! Oh, this is, this is going really well. All right, now I'm in a good mood. How are you? By the way, thank you so much for having... Everybody who's watching right now, if, if, if you don't know who this incredible icon is in media and technology, like, you're making a huge mistake. Uh, a. B. Uh, her podcast is such a beast. Uh, I did it the other day. It was, uh, I'm excited to hear her perspective on it, but mm-hmm. it was the first time we really got to jam at length. Yeah. Um, and I, my phone exploded. All my smartest Silicon Valley, like everybody I admire who I've either talked to often or I haven't talked to in three years hit me up and just said how great our chemistry was and how yeah. quality the show was. It was great. You offered a lot of really good insights. I think people were looking for super interesting insights about management and how to run a company and some of the struggles. And I think you showed off your struggles. And I think a lot of people don't do that. They don't say yeah, what they're worried right. about and they don't like review. It's not like you're being sensitive or anything else, or you're like a sensitive new age male, but you're like, Hey, this is the problem. And I think people appreciate that because they're going appreciate through it. themselves. So. Have you been the last couple of weeks since really we last talked all well? Good. Yeah. Are yeah. the podcast numbers through the roof? People consuming you know content what? like crazy? I have to tell you, some are, mine are up quite a lot. It's interesting. I changed my programming around really quickly in the coronavirus Smart. crisis. I worked on, I, I'm covering economics. I have healthcare people on. I have, uh, I had Esther Perel talking about relationships. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, and then I had an economist on. And so I've, I've changed up the programming. Well, the numbers th- have increased rather dramatically. This is what happens when you have skills. Since you are <laughs> actually a media professional and know well, what you're know doing. Audience. I yeah. Audience. I mean, to your point, I mean, I've been watching some podcasts stay on the same subject matter, which, yeah. which is actually tone deaf during this time. Yeah. Um, good for you. I mean, uh, I, I mean, it, everybody, if you get a chance, uh, uh, it, you know, I know you, a lot of you are watching, but in your side tab, just Google Kara. You really should know about her career. She's somebody really worth admiring. You have a question, Kara? Yes, I do. You know, my column this week, I read a column for the New York Times every week. And last week I wrote about Sean Hannity. I mean, about Fox News and the misinformation. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that because those people lost their mind when I pointed out. They yes, were- I'm sure it gets very emotional very fast. Mis- Go ahead. No, it's not emotional. But in any case, I wanted, I wrote about the PPP loans and I okay. wondered whether tech companies should take them. And so that was the debate. I know there's a, a debate going on among startups with VCs and VCs tend them not to want to take these PPP loans or these uh, to protect payroll. Um, and they're available for small businesses. And, and, and Kara, educate me. Why would? Yeah, I'm aware of the PPP loans, but right. why in the subject in the in the subculture of venture backland where you you play a lot of? Why are the VCs against it? 
Well, they're against it because they think they should take bridge loans and that they don't, that, that there could be, they have to, might have to change some of the governing rules uh, of these things because there's a thing called affiliate companies where they would yep. group all of these companies I together. Got it. I and got so it. they don't want to do that. They don't want to reveal a lot of information that you might, but some of these companies don't want to do layoffs, you know, and, and if other people think they're just trying to, you know, call the herd of their bad investment. Look, look, this may be a great chapter in Silicon Valley where companies start realizing that VCs have their own set of responsibilities and these are not your buddies and your unlimited cash coming to you and and they are, I mean, one of my biggest grudges with VC in general, obviously everyone yeah. treats it differently, is they, uh, I think that a lot of people don't realize that a lot of their behaviors and advice to companies is a portfolio statement. Yeah and not a specific for your company, Susan, exactly. or Rick. And so, you know, to me, when I hear what you're saying here, I think I'm hoping that the startups uh, get really educated, that they realize you're gonna get advice right now from a VC who she or he is more worried about what that means for the VC firm in exposing some of the dogs or things of like that, and recalibrating, not giving them leverage to raise a bigger round, not the fact that they're looking specifically at your business where a PPP is exactly what you should be doing, Right. And so I think this is an education time for a lot well, of people. There's, a, there's also the populist argument that these are companies that have availability of capital, presumably compared to a mom and pop store. Like most mom and pop stores have two weeks of cash on hand. To yeah, I mean, I, I think I, that's where I probably skew a little bit more like, okay, well, they decided to start a company in tech during this time and you decided to start a laundromat and that is some of the things that come along with it. Good right. news, laundromat, 99% of those companies actually go out of business. We hear about the ones that sell to Google or Facebook or go IPO. We right. do not hear about, and you know this, you've been through yeah. multiple rodeos. Yeah. There are some darlings right now, unicorns, that are actually not going to be in business. That's absolutely right. So, so I think there's pros and cons, you know, and I've been, I've been very close to both my whole life. Um, you know, there's pros and cons to running a normal great business that catch, cash, kicks out $2 million in cash or $200,000 in cash every year. You have an actual business. There are, uh, but you're not gonna necessarily have access to VC money because you're not gonna revolutionize the world and get a $500 million valuation on right. an idea. And that's the reality. That's the new reality, as you know. And one of the things that's interesting is watching Airbnb take that billion dollars from Silver Lake and Sixth Street Partners. You know, they need the money. And if they, if they and they, there might have been terms that were tough on them. And so if they don't- They're definitely were. Yeah, and if they don't have the leverage, and they should, because people are obviously believing that this will happen, this will thrive after oh, this is over. That if you're a small company, maybe you should consider a loan to keep look, uh, people. In look, my company, every company, what liquidity and for a rainy day just became super unpopular. Yeah. Savings became unpopular. Right. You know, like everything became offense. And I, you know, look to be frank, I like these events because they do reset and you get a little bit yep. back to some normalcy. I don't like to say I like them because I'm devastated for people that were hurt by it. But there is some unbelievable truth of the people that got hurt were doing behaviors that created the hurt. There's been a lot of people. My, listen, you know a lot about my story, at least from afar. Like I had a lot of leverage to do a lot of venture raising and a lot of certain things. And I decided to go very practical. I, people made decisions, and those decisions have ramifications. Right. Absolutely. It's an awesome. interesting time. So, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> you know, a lot of people have cloud cover to get rid of stuff they didn't. Listen, for all, for all of you that watch me, I'm a very good communicator where I can do something in a snap and it can give you a perspective. Other people are far better at me of going deep, deep, deep. This is a podcast you need to listen to. Kara, what a nice surprise. Thanks for being on. Thanks a lot. Bye. Take care. I mean it. A lot of you, I know the t subjects she touches and it goes left and right and back and forth. I think a lot of you could get a lot of value from listening to her show and get a different perspective and go deep. Let's keep it going. Terrible Johnny, what's good? What's good, Gary? How you feeling? Um, I'm hanging in, brother. How are you? Uh, are, you what, are you in New York right now? Jersey. Jersey. I'm in Brooklyn. So I totally, what you said earlier, I'm feeling the same exact way. Uh, wild times. Absolutely. Wild times. You know. um, my question for you, right? So you're dealing with some of the similar things that I'm dealing with. I have, you would think all the time in the world right now, you would think all the time in the world and because I'm stuck at home, I'm doing my part, staying at home. And I am a man that does a lot of things. Right? Terrible. Johnny, excuse me for one sec. Hey, Dustin, can you drop the name of the podcast so people can find it, have the team look it up? It's Kara, it's, it's Recode, it's Kara Swisher. Go ahead, Johnny. Yeah, so basically I'm just uh, in this new position where my life has been 
on stage and in recording studios. Those are the two things that generate income for me up until this point. And now, yes. I'm looking, now I'm a one-man tech team. We're actually currently on my podcast, my show as well, on Twitch, talking with Terrible at this moment. And I'm making those, and I'm used to having people around me, like an entire <laughs> team that handle things from fucking walking the dog to fucking whatever it is that I need done, doing the laundry, this, that, and the other. Now I've got 24 hours of the day and my brain is going a million miles an hour. How do I compartmentalize the time? You don't. You don't. You and I are too creative for that shit. Mm. Like, don't beat yourself up. Like, if the dog takes a shit, or you don't wash your clothes, or you missed an opportunity, or because there aren't people around you and you didn't get the energy, you can't go live for as long. I mean, I'm 9 to 11 on this show, and yeah. I came on at 9.30 today, because yeah. I had to take a business call at 9. I thought right. it was 9.15. Like, you, you don't beat yourself up. Like, like you just don't overjudge yourself, Johnny. You just, yeah. honestly, you don't. You don't, like, because you know why? You're just gonna do the best you can, and that's and that's awesome. And like some shit's gonna drop, and other things not gonna be as on point. And then and then you're gonna learn some shit about you, and you're gonna learn new stuff. Like it's, I'm telling you, bro, don't overthink it. It's you know like because we weren't built for structure, bro. Right. That's what the thing is. Is that I'm so used to having some type of a structure, and now I'm trying to create. No, 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 no. You're used to having infrastructure around you. Shh. Perfectly said, yes, very much so. And now I'm this one-man team, it feels like. I mean, I still have access to other people, right? I mean, I'm still working with them. We're able to communicate and learning new things about myself, such as how to use technology in order to do that. But it is just a completely different fucking ball game. And I'm just, go, just go with optimism here. Like, look, I... I, my speaking career subsidizes my being able to go all in on everything else. I, I've mm. taken a massive hit, mm. like, like real seven figures, not one, you yeah. know, like yeah. million, you know, like, so like I'm real, I got annihilated with speaking. Um, uh, I only thrive with people around me. My team is like on top of me, but the reality is we've got health, you know, 24, yeah. you know what else, bro? How old are you? Um, timeless. I'm timeless, bro. That's how old I am. But, Fair uh, enough. Yeah. Tomorrow I'll be 34. I love it. What I like is that now you have this experience. Mm -hmm. Now you have this experience. Agreed, you know, and it's interesting because you say you were, you were here during 9-11, I was not. I came to Brooklyn in 2010 and I think to myself, in a weird and twisted way, not in a, not, I don't want to make this sound too sick, but I'm like, I'm, I'm getting to witness a part of history right here. A hundred, by the way. And I'm like, I take that, go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry, finish your thought. I know where you're going, but go ahead. You take it as, a, as, a, as a, almost a blessing in a, in a weird fucking twisted ass way. That's like a weird way to no, 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 it's not a dark way. It's actually 100% true. I think the same thing. This is, we will be telling the stories of these three to 12 months for the rest of our lives. Right. And you went to Brooklyn in 2010, like perfect timing, all rocket ship up. Yeah. This is good for you. You're a young man. You're gonna be doing this for 60 more years. Yeah, and, and you know, I won't take up too much of your time. I know that you started late and you got a lot of shit to do and I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me because I am obviously a massive Gary V fan. By the way, guys, if you're on here talking with Terrible and you don't know who Gary is, please go check out. I've got all of his socials listed right here. Gary V on Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Check him out. Fucking guru. Uh, one last thing. Yeah. Me and Kevin Lyle got to sit down and have a, a talk because I started a thing with Kev and I want to talk to you about that at a separate point. Let's go. Um, he reached out to me uh, not too long ago about something in podcast land. I don't know if it's that or if it's something else, but we'll talk. It's much bigger. We should talk. Love it. By the way, like literally hit me up like on DM with him right now and let's get this going this weekend or early yeah, next week. I will. All right. Take care, Johnny. Stay well. Kevin's my guy. 300. Incredible label. All right. What's good? What's good? Summer, what's good? Daniel, what's good? Jamie Coop. Great to see you, Pat. Good. All right, Twitter, before we get to the next one, take a photo of this, share it. I'm going to follow a bunch of you right now. Um, I'm also asking Brandon for what the wine text of the day is. Um, let's see, all right. Remy's already sharing. Taylor's already sharing. Um, it is rocking here already. Remy, am I following you? I know. Oh, my God, Remy, all these years? Boom, you got your follow that you deserved five years ago. All right, let's go. Screen shoot, share it on Twitter. Uh, also, share the URL. Uh, the URL of this live stream with it for extra bonus points. All right, let's keep this going. Oh, Jared, you know how to win a boy's heart. Hey, I've, I've got no audio. No audio? All right, work with Dustin. He's going to work with you. He's, he won my heart and then he went away. True love, take it away from me. All right, let's keep this going. I got, I got scared because I saw the D-Rock part first and I said, wait a minute, we run out of guests? I got my D-Rock? No, I got a much better looking D-Rock. What's good, bro? Right. 
Yeah, what's up, man? Um, I'm chilling. You know, I'm in the West Coast, so I had to wake up at six. Thank you. So thank you. I look very tired. Now you look great. I'm a big fan. Thank you, bro. Um, well, um, the only question I really had, Gary, was so I've been a I've been an Instagram influencer for a while now, but um, I kind of know the game of of how to attract people. The only thing I can't really crack down is how to start working with companies because you know i'll hit them up hit them up hit them up and you know they just keep ducking what kind of what kind of what kind of content are you putting out um really as you can tell i have curly hair so that's really what catches people's attention so i'll just leave it out and i'll just have crazy so so are you so does that mean you're doing photos in like call it modeling? Are you doing funny uh, videos? Are you doing music? What I'm trying to do, I'm gonna give you the answer. I just need to know what the content is. Is it, I mean, I, uh, when I hear that, I hear modeling, which is amazing. I just wanna, right. like, don't worry about what you're doing. I just wanna know exactly what you're doing so I can give you good advice. Right, um, that's the thing though, like, I do everything you said. I do modeling, I do, I'm just getting into music, so my fan base is really, like, messing with that. Um, I'm. I do funny videos, I do all of it together. Can I give you a huge piece of advice? Yes. Take the three to four brands that you love the most. Yeah. And what's your IG handle? Because people want it. Ver- Veronica already thinks it's, you're cute. Uh, I see what it is. <laughs> it's a D2 underscores rock. D2 underscores rock, got it. Yeah. Um, listen, what you need to do is take your four favorite products. A soap, okay. a fucking, a candle, a fucking, drink, uh, you know, a piece of gum, your favorite candy, your favorite deodorant, and actually make fresh ass ads, and then the copy be like, yo, this isn't an ad, I'm just giving love, because I fucking love Old Spice, or I fucking love Saratoga Water. Like, make an ad, that's fucking amazing, whether it's a great photo, modeling, whether it's a skit, right? right. I'm telling you right now, that. All right. Yeah. Let me let me you see, let me, I'm going to break it down for you. You know how you're like super cute and have a great smile, which means girls come to you? Right. Other guys have to strategize to go. You have more leverage cuz you don't have to do that. What you need to do is that in business terms. You need to make the commercials. That's going to bring them to you instead of you you're thirsty on DM, bro. <laughs> Oh, man. All those guys you made fun of in high school and college and now that you see they're going, you're like, I'm just going to sit in the cut right here and it's going to come to me? <laughs> right. You're that guy that you made fun of with brands. Mm. You're thirsty. Okay. I want you to make the content as if uh, and then watch the bees come to the honey. Okay. Good. Okay. Got it. Um, one more question. Um, is there any, is there too much, too much content? No. Is there any, no, okay. Nope. All right. The algorithm and the way humans work, there's, 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 you're not good enough to make interesting enough content for too much content, but if you're good enough, if you're funny enough, if you're pretty enough, if you're smart enough, you can go forever. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, that was really the question. You You got it? You got it? Yeah, definitely. Makes I'm sense. Start working on it. Yes. How many how, how how many posts a day do you do? Uh, I do one, sometimes two. Great. You know where I'm going. You listen to me enough. This what's great about this is you need to put these four ads out in the next two weeks, and based yeah. on how little you post, you're set. You're just gonna do two, you know, a day, four times over the next fourteen days. You're good. Okay. Yep, sounds perfect, man. All right, D-Rock, take so care of yourself. Much. Can't wait to meet you in person. Let's keep this going. Uh, uh-huh. That was a good clip, Team Gary V. That whole, I can, title it, Stop Being Thirsty for Brand Money. That's going to crush on the gram. Let's go. Oh. Oh. What's up, Gary? What's good, Kristen? Um, so I'm really psyched to talk to you because um, I don't know if you remember this, but I met you like three years ago in Boston. I, well, and, I can uh, definitely tell by the accent, so I definitely know that. <laughs> So I basically found your content. Um, I'm a Boston girl, so you have a lot of the same uh, mindset and background as me. You know, we both kind of come from like people like um, judging you, a uh, little chip on the shoulder. Great. And, um, I started seeing some of your content because I was doing a, a message of the day for my nieces because I used to watch them every day. And my son had learning issues and I had to kind of like 
um, put more energy into him. And it was like teenage years. And I didn't yep. want him to stop losing the content. Self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Right. So I started like a little positive message of the day. Then they started adding friends. You know, like Then it turned to like 25 teenagers. Then it turns like all the people in my bar wanted to be in it. So like a lot of my customers joined in. It's like 40, 45 people, 50 people for like the past five years. I love and that. I found your content. And I was like, this dude is my dude. Like he talks like me. He thinks like me. I got to meet this guy. So I saw that you were going to be in Boston. And uh, I got up one morning. I just went there to wait, wait for you. And uh, I met D-Rock. Now listen, I'm 49. So like <laughs> social media wasn't my jam. And uh, so D-Rock was like, well, if you want to speak, Gary's going to tell you you have to go out and like speak for free wherever you can. So you came up the top of the escalator and I looked at you and I said, hey, Gary, I'm Kristen. I'm a bartender. I want to take my message to the masses. I, um, I want to come to New York and talk to you about how to build a brand. So for three years, patience, I've been trying to get in front of you and here we are. I love it. Um, uh, the reason I said to the people uh, in your team, and your team's amazing. Thank you. I feel like I'm like the poster child for your content. Um, because I basically have an anecdotal story for almost everything you say. Um, basically, like, uh, I thought I had superpowers when I was a kid. Um, my mom was a single mom, so she kind of gave me like that armor that I thought that I could do anything. You know, it's but fucking amazing. Be, yeah, like the, you know the the inner gut. Like, and I there's know there's there's nothing like struggle in real life, like around you, mm -hmm. but complete and utter dominance here. Mindset, right? Mindset. Mental toughness. And so, um, like, I could make things happen if I believed in it. Like, I really thought that it could happen. Like, I won something in third grade, so I just thought that I could really make it always happen. I fucking and, love uh, it. And my mom taught us to, like... Big shout out to third grade. Yes, exactly. And so, uh, my mom taught me, like, listen to my girl. We had to make our own choices, and she supported your choice, but you had to pay for the consequences of whatever it was. Do you know what Account I'm saying? Do I know what you're saying? <laughs> my favorite thing on earth is account... Besides kindness, my favorite thing is accountability. Sure. But people exactly. are confused by that because those feel like very different energies. Mm -hmm. That's why you and I connect because you mm -hmm. get that. Exactly. So so fast forward. So then like through my life, I kind of always had to like just do whatever I wanted to do. Um, high school, I wanted to be an actress. I was supposed to go to four-year school, sent my parents son. I'm just like, it's not happening. I'm going to go to community college because if I want to be a starving actress, I'm not going to be able to pay loans. So my mother Smart. was like, she thought about it. She's like, you know, Kristen's right. Um did some different jobs, tasted some things, hated corporate America, had a bad experience. So I said, you know what? Packed my shit, moved to New York at 23. Ate shit, like you talk about, sleeping on couches, rice and beans, a whole, you know, a whole nine yards. And then um, it was just kind of a shady business. And I'm just the type of person that I don't sell my soul. Like I'd rather be broke and be me than be rich and be somebody else. It's just, it's just how I roll. And um, so I met my husband, he was back in Boston. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna give love a shot. So I came home. Best thing I ever did was sit together 21 years later. I love it. Um, we've had a lot of experiences. Life hit us a lot of times. Uh, he got hurt on the job, was out of work for two years with an injury. Uh, on a March blizzard, uh, a house burned down in the middle of the night, and uh, we lost everything we owned. <laughs> got back on our feet, made a business deal with somebody, lost everything we owned. So I've had to kind of fight my way through things. And then my son has um, some learning issues, and I really had to like learn about special education, which I could go on for days about education in this country, but I'm not going to. And I fought for him day in and day out. And after the end of like getting him where he needed to be, I kind of was like a little bit depleted. You know what I mean? I yeah, him. you put you fucking you put it all. Like sometimes you just put it all on the field, and like it's kind of one of those like. <sighs> Right. And, and I, I kind of like, I give to everybody all the time and I had to learn to kind of take a step back for myself. So when it was time for high school, I decided that we we're just going to step away from school in general because I think he's creative and he just has a different brain. And I said, I just don't think it's the right fit for him. Listen, so if, you, if, if, if you're massively creative and massively entrepreneurial, mm -hmm. the American school system is not for you. Let it, let it, let there be no fucking confusion. 100%, I agree like, with that, 100%. And by the, way, I, by the way, people think I hate school. I don't hate school. Me neither. I really don't. <laughs> I hate school for certain people, the end. I don't hate anything. I, I like, I like self-awareness. I like self-esteem. I like, I like being real. And good, congratulations. Good Thank for you. you. So, 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 um, so then that kind of started the thing when we started homeschooling. I kind of started like really diving into your content. And three of your, uh, Ask Gary V's that really stuck out to me were Logic, Russ, and Hassan Minaj. So speaking and people are my thing. And um, I always want to figure out how I was going to become a speaker. I have a lot of creative ideas in the back of my head. My brain moves very quickly. I'm kind of like a think tank. So Hassan was like, I started my own comedy, comedy co you know, group at the college. And I was like, bam, done right there. Signed myself up for an open mic and I did op comedy.
And once I got back in front of the microphone and like the audience again, you lit up. Like, reignited me. Lit up. Your, your energy, like you basically reignited my childhood and you got me back in there. Like you'd make a video like, I don't care if you're 46. I'm like, I'm fucking 46. <laughs> And I was like, I need to talk to this guy. So I basically started doing the comedy. So I'm kind of hustling home life, uh, marriage, bartending at night, and then doing the comedy thing. I did, I did your uh, advice of reverse engineering. So last year for my birthday, I said to my husband for my 48th birthday, I want to do a one woman show. We rented a hall, 150 people showed up for me, friends, families, customers that I've waited on over the years. I uh, videotaped it, uh, put it on YouTube. Kristen being Kristen, because that's all I know how to be. Hold on, hold on, watch, hold on. Like, first of all, I'm super happy and super sad. Let me tell you why I'm super happy. I'm super happy because I adore you and I can't wait to start talking. Like this is gonna last a little bit here. I've got stuff for you. I got stuff for you. I'm devastated because I don't have any fans anymore because they all love you so much right now. It's over. So put up your handle on, how many subscribers do you have on YouTube right now? Dustin, get me the count or Kristen, you probably know. Uh, I don't. I think I you don't know exactly. 60. I think I only have sixty because I don't have enough content on there. But I do. Don't worry. My comedy. Don't worry. And then my Instagram is where I do most of my stuff, and that's Kristen being Kristen also. And um, and so, how many followers do we have there? Like a thousand, thousand seven. Okay, watch this. Okay. I'm actually gonna watch it in real time. This is gonna be the most fun of my whole day because I promise you, everybody here loves you more than me now, and so it's devastating for me. My career is over, but yours. <laughs> Is about to be. We we'll collaborate, Gary. We get things. Yeah, to do. Chris. Like, when I'm finished, can you please hook me up? Can you like at least like, like you know, maybe put me on as the opening act to your your speeches or something? Well, I was always like, when you release Vayner speakers, I was like, someday. All right. And then uh, I've just like, followed. Okay, I just followed you. So you're at 11:05. You're already at 11:14. Uh, it's moving. 11:20. No, no. Put it back up, Dustin. Let's get this thing completely out. Eleven thirty-seven. I want. I want every fucking person who's following right now, because you know what the energy is. If you like me, you like her. Eleven sixty-eight. This is YouTube, YouTube, and Instagram. You're at twelve hundred already. It's just happening. Twelve eleven. Twelve twenty-four. Twelve thirty-six. Kristen, your life is about to change. Twelve fifty-three. It's just happening now. Twelve seventy-one. Twelve ninety. Jesus Christ. Thirteen oh eight. 1323, 1336, 1348, 1362, 1380, 1394, 1414, oh 1426, <laughs> You basically are siphoning my whole fan base right now. You should start Last Call with Kristen as a YouTube Live. Start it tonight and fucking go. Okay. You just go right on, what is it, YouTube Live or Facebook Live? Both, but you know, okay. my team will help you. Team, get somebody. That's, not get, tech. That's my thing, Gary, like technology. Kristen, I know. Why do you think I'm giving you my team? I got this. This is why I interrupt everybody. I know the fucking answers before the questions are coming out of people's mouth. People are mad at me and think I'm rude. I'm not. I'm just trying to help faster and do more. Yeah, like what do you want from me? I'm not coming from, I'm not mean. I'm not audacious. I don't mind other people talking. I love people talking. I just know what the fuck they're gonna say before they say it. I feel it's and I don't have an hour on fucking, I don't have an hour on, or 40 minutes on my podcast. I'm trying to help people get to more shit. If you want to yes. hear what their thoughts are on that, they're on 800 fucking thousand other podcasts. I'm not trying to interrupt. I'm trying to get more shit out for you. I'm sorry that I fucking know what people are going to do and say before they do it. It's my fucking gift. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. It's like when someone talks to you, you see like the field. Because it's so easy for you because it's not your life. That's how it is for me. Like, it's like, it's not my life. So I can say, you got to do this, this, and this. You of know? course. It's like one of those things from doing all the night. Like, of course. Yeah. One, one of the things I try to do a lot is not do that. Like, I, when I give advice, I'm like, am I taking that advice? Because I don't want that. Well, fuck you. you. Like, I don't want that callback. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. 2000. Thing, Gary, yeah, go ahead. I'm uh, listening. So a book has been in my head for a very long time. And but hold on, Kristen. You have yeah. 2,100 followers now. Are you kidding me? Like, yeah, you, you, jumped my, you doubled my thing in one, like, we, within five we, seconds. We double out here, Kristen. <laughs> We're doubling out here. Well, you know. You know what I love about this, Kristen? This is yeah. why I love life. You've been trying to get in front of me for three years. Like, like you never know where life goes. You know, like, right. if we would have met, if we would have met, you know, if you would have gotten an email from DRock and said, 15 minutes with Gary in New York, you would have been like, oh my God, yeah. right? And it would have been epic. Yes. But this is going to change your career. 
my, people are following you right now and we have similar energies. This is gonna change right. your life. This, this is gonna change your life. Well, I wanna change other people's lives so you change me, it goes to our own circles. And that's I know what's about. happening here. Yeah. I'm not yeah. confused. Yeah, what were you gonna say, Kristen? So, um, a book. I've been trying to, a book. It's been in my head for a very long time. Yep. Originally, you're gonna think this is crazy. It was gonna be called Fuck the Joneses. And then this summer when you started going Fuck the Joneses, I was like, is this guy in my friggin' head? It's ridiculous. Well, why don't you and just call it like Fuck the McCormick so that it can be very Boston? Well, it's true. That's a good, good concept. Another thing I came Thank up you. with I'm not rich or famous, but I'm happy as fuck. That was the other topic. I like that. I kind of like Fuck the McCormicks. Fuck the McCormicks? Okay. How about Fuck the Crafts? Or the Brady's, <laughs> or the Edelman's. I you know, know that. Like yeah. So anyway. I figured like the quarantine, um, because I'm not working right now because the bartending is off until everything reopens. Except you're going to be bartending every night live on YouTube and Facebook and IGTV, and all these people are going to be watching. You're you're at 2,200 according to Matt Melden. Yeah, because see the thing is like I love the. Like, the reason, like, when it's hard for me to talk to the camera is because I love the people. You know, well, the, 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 right, like this. This. And and so when the when the quarantine happened, I started talking to the camera just directly, like the way you talk about doing that, because I was trying to help people kind of navigate mentally through this because it's it's uncharted territories for a lot of people, and uh, it kind of disrupted everybody's life. So I'm trying to keep people positive and trying Kristen, to keep focus. Where are you with TikTok? Ah, I knew I I had to figure it out because. Again, I know that I, I had to figure out how it was going to work for me. Like, I know you say just get on there and make stuff. And now the story time, and I found the real talk and some of that. And, like, and I'm a, I love to dance. Like, I'm an old school, like, hip-hop you're, radio. You're also a comedian. Yeah. Doing comp- Kristen, you're going to be a superstar on TikTok. <laughs> if you make three TikToks a day, you're okay. going to be bigger than me on TikTok. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you are. All right. That's the thing. I'm just like Look the how, technology piece you, of You're like me, but but you have like a like a happy face. I'm like coming out here trying to fucking strangle people to happiness. You're fucking like you're gonna crush. Do you understand that this is it? Like this is it? Yeah, I hope so. Because I've been. No, don't I've been fucking crying. hope. I don't need hope. All right, you fuck, it, Kristen, in third grade, you fucking. Took, what do you mean hope? We're, go back to third grade, Kristen. That knows you fucking knew you could will things back then. I don't give a fuck about the burnt house or the fucking two year thing yeah. or if the fucking life tour or New York City suck shit. Fuck all that. Yep. We got 50 more years to be a fucking superstar. That is your destiny. Here we are today. Right. Facts. 100% facts. I agree with you. I'm, I'm ready to do it. And, and the thing is, is like it's all about people for me. So it's kind of like, it's not about, it's really about just. Kristen, if you, if you do not do happy hour or bar time, what the fuck you call it? Tonight okay. at seven to eight p.m. and bring people on, and my team's gonna stay on with you. Justin's gonna pass you to somebody right now. We're gonna literally handhold you to build out the infrastructure to how to do it. Okay, I'm I'm, okay. I'm going to get in the car during COVID, drive across state lines. I don't give a fuck if Rhode Island tries to stop me. I'm gonna drive right through those fuckers. I'm gonna come to your house and I'm gonna burn your fucking house down. Okay. If I don't see you on tonight. Okay, seven to eight. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, Gary. I appreciate right. you so much. Thank you for everything. You got it. Take care. Thanks. Bye, Kristen. Kristen being Kristen, follow her on all platforms, especially uh, YouTube and Instagram. Hopefully that's her, uh, hopefully that's her uh, TikTok as well. Let's keep this going. That was fun. Jared. Hey Gary, how's it going, man? Really good, bro. I'm fucking feeling your shirt, bro. You got me fired up. Uh, I saw you two years ago in Houston. We did that keynote with like George Bush and all them. I think I caught your attention in the front row too with the same I remember. Shirt. I remember. <laughs> good to see you again, man. Hey, first of all, thank you for everything you've done, man. I truly believe you're the one of the biggest reasons I'm even still here breathing today. Uh, and practicing my uh, question for the last three days, trying to, I think I've already kind of worked the answer, knowing what you're going to say. Um, what I'm kind of working with is like using patience as delusion. Kind of mm. like holding myself accountable, uh, holding myself accountable and dwelling. Mm. Like I could have done more yesterday, mm. but like I did some good. Like you know what I mean. Like accepting that. Like where does where does gratitude become contentment? That's where a great. Does, that's a great where question. Does ambition become like, like yes, I want more, but like I'm so thankful for what I have already. Like in spite of nothing. Like everything I have is Love in spite it. of nothing. I don't have that struggle that I wish I kind of did now, but um. Like, like, how do you find that balance? And I think you're just going to look at me and say it's self-awareness. Like, I know when I'm being a lazy fuck, and I know when I've done good. But, but you know it's actually, I mean? yes, but I actually think it's a little bit different than that. Actually, it's not self-awareness for me. Maybe it is the right answer for you, but let me go where I'm going. You're overthinking it. 
Charge you over everything, bro. <laughs> no shit. You know, you're overthinking it. Like, do me a favor, don't analyze tomorrow. Excuse me, yesterday. Stop analyzing yesterday. And that's the thing, like, I don't have, like, some arbitrary number, you know what I mean? Like, like I'm 32 delivering pizzas. I know I don't want to be 35 delivering pizzas, but, like... Can I ask you a question? Like, like, on some I'm real shit. Can I ask you a question? On some real yeah. shit. Are you happy? Dude, I'm so happy, bro. I'm, bro. like, the happiest I've ever been. Bro, listen to my fucking face. What? Please listen to my face. Because that's, that's what caught me. Bro, listen to my face. Delivering 30, being 35 and delivering pizza and being happy is way better than being 27 and a VP on Wall Street and being unhappy and it's not fucking close. Bro, to the last breath I breathe, I will single-handedly, like a fucking Nova, try to change our culture to happiness, not money. With every ounce of my soul for the rest of my life, I'm completely convinced on this. Completely, brother. Yeah. And that's and that dude, I've been following your content for like three years, dude. And it's like, and once I started listening to you, it's like, dude, this is like the the whole reason I even had like confidence in myself, like back then, like when I was like, I was a fuck up my whole twenties, like my whole twenties, but in my head I was like, like I've got massive self awareness, I've got good intentions, I'm a genuine person, like kindness, empathy, all that. So like putting put, put, put good on on bad day, but it's like I feel like some days I sit back and I'm like, ah, good things happen to good people. I'm just being a good person. And I'm like, you didn't do shit today, dude. You need to do, like, I preach macro, That's right. micro That's speed, a, micro patience, and, like, and I'm not You're moving fast on things. That's fine. That's different. You know, listen, bro, you just might not have ambition. <laughs> I mean, I do, but I, dude, I have shit here. work ethic. Dude, my work ethic is dog shit. That's because the you thing I haven't picked up from you yet. Because you, you, you don't like what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Do you like the Jets? Uh, I like them because you, Wayne Krebetz, my dude. <laughs> I that. He got a he got a raw shake playing in the wrong time, and uh, Jericho Cotter won a uh, a fantasy league for me years <laughs> back. So I've got a soft spot what, for a few. What, what's what's your favorite shit? Like, what do you do? Do you like video games? Do you like music? Do you like fucking so, so TV? Right now I'm flipping, so right now I'm flipping shit from thrift stores on the side, and How I've got plans. Is to that fun? My own, uh, I'm sorry. Do you like that? Or do you do that because I like it? Love it. What's up? And, What's up? Uh, I, hope, I love this whole like, I, bro. Do you like the? Uh, do you like the uh, flipping? I love it. I love it. Bro, you'll make a lot more money flipping full time than you will pizza. I just lost the audio again, man. You did? No problem. Can you hear me now? 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 Can you hear me now? 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 I can, now? I can still hear you, just so you know. Yeah, I know. Can you hear me? Can't hear me? All right. Yo, we're going to get you back. We're going to get you back. We're going to get you back. Dustin, hit him I'm up. Watch. Let's keep going. It's a fun day. Oh. Oh, hey. Hey, hey how are you? <laughs> What's your name? Where are you from? Um, I'm, well, I'm from Australia, but I live in uh, England now, so a bit of a change. Nice but, to meet um, you, Adam. Yeah, nice to meet you too, man. I've been, uh, well, I've been following you for like five years now, but sort of behind the scenes, never really popped onto one of these before. Um, but basically, just to give you a bit of context, I actually followed all of your marketing advice when I was at university, um, started my own social media agency, was earning like a full-time wage at uni, um, which is awesome. So thanks for that. You're welcome. Uh, at the end of the day, though, like I got tired of just, cold calling and the whole service delivery aspect of it. And it sucks. Just, it's grinding. Yeah. So unless you I, unless you love the dirt, yeah. it, you can get the money, but if you don't love getting punched in the mouth, services yeah. sucks. That's the thing. Like the, the money was coming in, but I was just like miserable just working just 16 hours a day doing that. So yeah. what I ended up doing is making a course to sell online, which was like showing entrepreneurs how to grow their Instagrams and things yep. like that. Yep. Um, that hit off, got 500 signups for that, um, basically marketing that over funnels. And what I've been doing since is teaching my friends how to do that. So one of my mates is a barber. I'm teaching him how to sell courses on how people can cut their hair, stuff like yep. that. Um, one of my mates trades Forex. So what I want to- Adam, make sure those people are making courses that are worth the money 
that world gets really spammy really fast where there's better information for free than what they're selling for $79. Just yeah. do me a favor while you're teaching that. I don't, I don't begrudge anybody selling courses. I begrudge yeah. when people care more about the funnels than they do about the content in the courses and then the person's not getting something good. Yeah, that's, that's my question really. Yeah, that's the fucking problem. Yeah, because at the end of the day, I actually love teaching people how to do this. And I sold a course. I've sold two of my courses so far. Um, and I really enjoy teaching people and seeing the results. But at the same time, like my reputation is really important to me. And I know that I'm part of this whole making money online thing. And it, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just proud like, of you. I'm proud of you. Yeah. I'm proud of you. I'm, I don't know what else to say. I'm uncomfortably proud of you. There's yeah. a there's a way to do it differently. There's there's creating access, just not just PDFs. So now all of a sudden, the course could be twenty nine dollars, uh, you know, for, or eight hundred dollars, but it also comes with one hour of the barber's time on Facetime. You know, like yeah. just some, you know, like you know, just something of more fucking value. It it just yeah. gets so spammy. It gets yeah. so spammy, and people just like at all costs try to convert on the funnel. They put all their effort in the sales and yeah. none of it on the content and people are buying and then people sell hopes and dreams. It gets real spammy real fucking fast, bro. They start saying, all of a sudden they A-B test and they go, I'll show you how to build a barber shop that does a million dollars versus like, yeah. I'm gonna show you the craft of, like it can get really bad really fast and 98% of what I see is really, really bad. Which is why I, putting pressure on the game, do the reverse and put out decks that are fucking fire for free that yeah. then kids like you take and repackage and sell. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that it, it's that sort of what I teach in my course. So it's not so much, I mean, it's marketing and funnels, but it's how to actually- Can I, can I give you a very good piece of advice? Yeah. Never pick money. Yeah. You have a moral co compass and you're smart enough to believe in reputation because you can never get away from who you were on the internet. Yeah. And you're young. Yeah. Leave money on the table. Yeah. So like with that, obviously, because I still want to help people like build stuff and I want to put out like a ton of free content. That so do that. Use. So that do that with zero thought of what it's going to yeah. mean to your funnel. Yeah. Because the second you think about your funnel, the content becomes manipulation, not education. Because subconsciously, even if you're a good kid like you, you're a good kid, I can, I'm, it's black and white to me. Subconsciously, yeah. you're in that place. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the problem is, is that I've ran- And look, Dustin Mills says information should be free. I, I don't necessarily agree with that, Dustin, completely. Like, you can sell information. My big thing is, People buy information every day. Books cost money, cable costs money, like everything co can cost money. My big thing is, do you feel great about what you're selling? You know, you, do, are, do you like your reputation? Does your head go on the pillow easily? Uh, there's so many people that sell things that put people out of business, but they made $4,000 on the course. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Adam, Adam, you can, you can navigate this. You can make money by creating a course that also comes with a virtual keynote, which also comes with a one hour session for eight weeks where you're giving a lot of value yeah. and, you can, and you can change adjectives and pictures because the pictures that convert to the sale are alluding to bullshit 99% of the time and you know it and I know it. That, yeah, literally, that's because I'm running these funnels and adverts and obviously I'm not doing the rental Lamborghini stuff. Like that. That's lame, I'd never do that. Um, and I'm never gonna, like, honesty is everything to me, um, transparency as well. So I was just, that's my question really, is how to Brother, differentiate. Brother, easy, don't compromise for money. Yeah. Bro, you're gonna make, you're gonna make less money after this call and be 30,000 yeah. times happier. Yeah. That's what I do. Bro, I could be the richest of them all. There's not a fucking Lamborghini or funnel that can beat me if I went that route. I'm the yeah. most charismatic, I'm the smartest, I'm the hardest working, I'm the fucking best. And a lot of those fuckers make more money than me because they don't give a fuck. Yeah. But guess what? They make more money than me in 2018, 2019, 2020. But talk to me about 21, 22, 31, 42, 48. You're a fucking kid. 
don't ruin your reputation for a couple fucking hundred thousand bucks. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to do what you do and what Russ did as well, build a catalog of free content. And then, but the problem is I've, I've already sold these courses and my courses are good. Like I'm, I'm, I work hard on these courses. It's not like a bunch make, of- make a, make a video and say, I, I really worked hard on these. I felt great about them, but I'm making yeah. a pivot. The end. Yeah, but like all the people that have already bought the courses, won't they be like, all this information is free now. Now I'm angry that I've just spent hundreds of- <laughs> No, because they got their ROI and things change. I mean, yeah. I mean I'm mean, i selling, let me, uh, here's a good plug. Wine text time. Adam, if you were in the US, I would make you buy, but you, you got off easy. Uh, we're about to sell a wine today that we, we have sold for $32 a bottle, a Chardonnay. Everybody sells for 40 bucks a bottle. And we're gonna sell it on wine text today for 1980 or something like that. People are gonna be happy. By yeah. the way, things change too, Adam. TikTok yeah, yeah. comes out and they're gonna be happy that you gave them a strategy on TikTok. Yeah. You have no problems with that. That is a non-event. That, yeah. That's when, some, when somebody in eight months comes and he's like, I want a refund, you fucking do this? You're gonna say, no sir, I'm sorry. At that point it was selling. I've pivoted my business. I know you got value out of that. I'm proud of that. Let's move on. Yeah. Okay, so just put everything out for free, give them the roadmap, give them everything, and then if they need it, I'm here to guide them through that for a while. Or give it, give it for free like crazy, and then also create something called you know, Access with Adam, where you charge people $2,000 a month to hang out with you and drink tea. Do you know how much I could charge for this right now? Yeah, I love that. Adam, on some real shit, on some real shit, don't, don't flatter me, because we're trying to educate and help people. Yeah. What, what would you pay if, if I came out a week ago, forget about the pack that you'd be like, why did Gary do this? He's fucking changed, fuck it, you know, forget about that. Yeah. If, if a week, two weeks ago I said, I'm doing tea with Gary Vee behind a closed door, it's two hours a day, you could be on, I'm doing it the whole time, on some real shit. Don't, don't fluff the number, just out of curiosity. What do you think you would have paid for the month of that? Well, you personally. Well, yeah, you. Yeah. I spent 6K on courses that haven't helped me at all. Right, so, right. no, no, how much, yeah. like on some real shit, Forget about what you've done. What would you think you would have paid? Uh, eight to ten k. Good. I, if I put it out for eighteen hundred, you would have been pumped, and fucking a yeah. hundred thousand people would have signed up. But is this like just for an hour or like? What? No, no. I would. I made, Did you follow me? Let's say two weeks ago, I made pretend. Hey guys, I'm doing tea with Gary V. It's a membership thing. You got to pay to be part of it. You get to watch all the content. You get to be in the comments. Yes. But, about, but not public and free, closed and paid for, smaller group, but, and for the whole time, for a month, two hours a day, two hours a day. That's sick. That's actually, yeah, that's so cool. Uh, that gives me an idea to, yeah. Well, I'm here to give you ideas. I'm here to fucking help for free. Because <laughs> I wanted to do that. Originally, I wanted to just release everything for free, but then I'm like, how would I, well, monetize that? Could I get it. I get it. Get it. Make the, better content. The bottom line is, the bottom line is, you, you're looking at here, from Elisa King at 50 bucks to Hustle Time at 10K a month, the bottom line is, I probably could have made, right now when people, need, people are scared right now, right now people would need me. Put up the $50 one, you know, Dustin, don't throw the 10K one. You know, like, you know, but like, you know? Yeah, yeah Shane goes 100, you know, 100, smaller group, 100,000 people. Yeah, I mean, like, if I went all out and sold it, yeah. There's a lot of ways to do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that gives me two for sure. Bullshit yeah. ads that allude to fake promises on the internet to sell a product that is just fucking content that if somebody took the four hours, they could gather it on YouTube and yeah. the internet. It's not going to lead to a sustained legacy. I can promise you that. It, you might make some cash up front, yeah. but at what that, expense? That's why, that's why I started this because I've been the victim. Like I bought so many courses. Um, put like out it. content for free and if you need yeah. to monetize I do think a group virtually that gets two hours of your time once a week for the whole year a lot of those people would pay actually yeah. can you see oh you can't see the comments I was on some real shit and it could be zero dollars on some real shit what would you pay for a month of tea with Gary V if it was behind a closed door just on some real shit what do you think you would pay from zero dollars don't try to act like a baller I'm just trying to get some data here for you like you know like it just, you know, people can do it when you bring value. 
you know, yeah. let me start giving you 1,000 from Koontz, you know, my arm and my leg. Thank you, that 5'2 80 <laughs> lady, you know. Um, you know, like, like it just, you know, like there's so much. So it's, you know, like there's so much opportunity, 500 bucks for Anna, like, like 250 a month, like from, you know, somebody else, 10,000 from me. Like, like, yeah, listen, where I'm at, a lot of people can't afford it, but like, I could easily roll in a thousand people here at twenty thousand bucks a month, you know. Like, you know how much money that is, but yeah. I, but that's not what I want. I want to be happy and I want to have legacy. I suppose what you're talking about then—that's the long game. Like, I couldn't uh, run paid advertisement to my free stuff because you could. R I Y. Yeah, you could. You know, wouldn't I? I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you just got a lesson in is brand versus sales. Yeah. All these people that claim that they're marketers, they're fucking whore salesmen. Shit. Yeah. Using bullshit things. Literally kidding me at the other day and what fucking went to, they went to San Diego just to take photos with cars and girls and animals. Yeah, literally. Yeah. All right, man. I'll listen, do that. I'll listen do that. to me. You're too good of a kid. Go down. You're, you, you, you started going down a road you realized, uh-oh, uh-oh, good news. I'm fucking putting my hand in. I'm grabbing you out. You got this, Adam. Yeah, yeah. I'll do it. I'll do the Russian Gary V method. I love it. Take care, brother. That's sick. Thanks, man. Bye-bye. Uh, people ask about how you get questions on. Joey Begelli, here's how. You either hit me up at 212-931-5731 and if you're in America or Canada and you're not part of my text platform making a huge mistake, free stuff, access, all sorts of shit, please take a post of this right now on Twitter. Share the link that you're watching this on and this photo. Let me just, let me get my tea, hold on. Post that on Twitter and your question and the hashtag, and the URL this is on right now, and we're gonna pick some of you for tomorrow's show or the following week. Oh, there is no show tomorrow or Monday. Um, some family stuff, so I'll be back Tuesday. I know that kind of hurts some feelings. All right, let's keep this going. Jay, what's good? How you doing? Very well. Um, so my, first, it's it's an honor to be on with you, man. You, you had a great impact on my life by all Thank your you. books. and. Thank um you. Super pumped to be on. Thank you. Um, my thing is, uh, I was I was I, I was working in higher ed. Um, went to corporate that worked with higher ed. Made made some decent money. Um, it, it proved some concepts that I already believed in in business. Um, got my MBA, and I felt like you know what this stuff is. Uh, uh, the company I was working for was making a difference in students' lives in higher ed. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I felt like, man, a lot of social justice, nonprofit organizations uh, could use this stuff. I felt like nonprofits and social justice organizations are a little behind. They're ahead on empathy. They're ahead on a lot of things, but they're behind in methodology. So I started I something agree. to help. Uh, so I started uh, helping them out. And I had a struggle with my business model. And then finally, I stumbled on doing like small retainers. So like 150 bucks a month for a couple hours a month. Had like three clients. But then, you know, with my uh, wife and I wanted to grow our family, healthcare in the States, uh, I got a job at UPenn, um, had a second baby. Thank God I did because uh, he had some minor issues. I'm sorry, um, you shot for a second. You had a second child and he had some issues? Yeah, he had some I'm health sorry issues that. at the I'm birth. Mm-hmm. And um, thankfully, he's okay. everything's okay. But if I didn't have yeah. the health care, uh, you know, you would have been in big fucking trouble. A different costs that you're yeah. into. Yeah. Yep. So um, I, I am passionate about uh, career development. I, I've done the business. I've done corporate. I've done nonprofit, and I love helping younger people navigate career and passion and strength building and hustling and networking and trying to you know piece that them together. But this new place I'm at um, wasn't what it was all uh, set up to be, um, and so I feel like I'm, I was. I try to make it work. Um, I feel like I, I, I just don't feel like it's a, a safe uh, environment yeah. in terms of professionally. Okay. I dread meetings. I dread uh, Monday morning. Um, sometimes I feel it on Saturdays where I dread Monday. And yeah. that, but I have a family and the job I am at has I got amazing health care. So 
um, I'm I'm kind of worried with this economy. Like, do I do I make the pivot and and do go back to my little small thing and try to build it up again, or am I should I hunker down? My until we see what happens. I think you can do the consulting thing on the side. I really do, and I think that you should consider getting another job. The job market's gonna be wild uh, after this. If this this could shape up super weird. It's almost like a redraft in sports terms. It's almost like if every player became available and you redraft, like like companies are laying off at record. I mean, we've had more people laid off in the last three weeks than we did during the Great Recession in 2008. I don't think people understand mm. what this is gonna look like. And by the way, as a business owner that's fighting every hour right now to save every job he can, um, it's gonna get worse. But then I think it's gonna happen that it's gonna come back pretty quickly. I really do. Like at worst case scenario, a year from now when the fucking vaccine comes, people are gonna be popping. You know? Mm -hmm. So Jay, for me, if you were my brother, and that's how I treat every one of these calls, brother and sister, my quick hot take intuition is you start the side consulting business. If you're talking about a couple hours a week, you know, for at 150 bucks, A, I would try to push that up, though they may be struggling right now because donations are, you know, but even let's say that, because you know, you know, four fifty, like cool, like one hundred fifty bucks a month for a couple hours a week. Is that what it was? Uh, a couple hours a month. Oh, beautiful! Nice. I think you go back out with that product. You fucking work at night. You know, uh, I promise you, when you hate your fucking job and you come home and you have to work on this other thing, it actually makes you happier. That two hours of work makes you happier. You may want to see the two kids. You may want to see your lovely wife, but it's still gonna make you happier and the kids are asleep and like, and guess what? We all have to eat shit sometimes. Sometimes there's a war, sometimes there's a pandemic, sometimes there's a massive economy. My take is you start the side business now, it may be tricky, you may not be able to get people back, you keep that and then when things go into the redraft, right? Like September, October, January, when it starts picking back up, I think you get another job, a different job doing something similar. You might make a little less money because I think the salary's gonna reset but you'll be fuck, happy as fuck, which will give you energy to build up your 150. You do, you get nine of those. You see where I'm going? Yeah, yeah. Uh, another question too is, uh, is, is it, I, we have some savings, some cash uh, from the, uh, uh, the, the, the taxing that, that, this guy's doing. Well, what's um, what's, what's uh, happening right now with the job? Are you are you furloughed or are you sitting at home or what's no, happening? No, I'm, I'm, work, I'm working remotely. Uh, Dude, that's a fucking you, this is the, you fucking won the lottery. That's true. That's true, and that and that's where it goes back to like um, the happiness versus dread versus gratefulness. You have to be happier um, now that you're not actually physically around the negativity, right? You still have it mentally, but you're at least physically not there. Or are you more unhappy or are you happier? Uh, I'm equally unhappy with, because <laughs> the, 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 the unhealthy dynamics translate virtually. Of course. Um, when somebody's a shithole, they're a shithole virtually and in real life. Jay, listen, I think that the leadership of family has responsibilities. I think taking high risk moves of tapping into savings right now is extremely risky. I also don't want you to break down emotionally from deep sadness. Yeah, I was using just uh, the, the, the savings um, from getting certifications on, I'm a tech nerd, I love Linux, I love open source, um, I love all that, the tech world. Unfortunately, I was, I was so uh, in in the, the sunken cost of my other educational uh, pathways that I was like, I can never break away and make a pivot. Bro, I know bro, if I get a certificate. I, I, no, time. fuck, no, you're too, you're too schooled out. Companies hire people that don't have any fucking education, like any, fuck a certificate. Fucking just email people, like if you can fucking code, you can fucking code. Development is like fucking sports. LeBron doesn't have a fucking degree from a college. Yeah. You're, you're in that framework, right? Spe you know, Ivy League school where you work at, fucking, you know, I'm listening to you. Fuck that framework. Just literally email a thousand people on LinkedIn and say, I can fucking code. Where'd you go to school? Not for that, but here's where I went. But I can do it. You'd be very surprised how much entrepreneurship has seeped into corporate America. All you need is one CTO to be like, yeah, this guy can code, hired. 
Don't fucking get your validation from a piece of paper that costs a ton of money. Yeah, well, I still have to learn the process, though, because I don't know how to code yet. Got but, it. Got it. Yeah. Respect. There's a lot of fucking free fucking ways to learn it on the internet. Yeah. Okay. That's what I would do. So I grind it out my job, learn something at night. Listen, eating shit for as long as possible is always the right strategy, but you have to stop eating shit when you know you're on the verge of breaking. And only you can decide that. But unfortunately, a lot of us men and women out here have responsibilities that our decisions have ramification on others. You know, yeah. I have a lot of family involved in my decisions and then I have a thousand lives and those people are family to me too. Yeah, my wife My wife has a, de- has a decent income. Her, her benefits package would be eh, it's okay. Um, which will allow me some flexibility. Well, that's huge. And then if you, and then if you look at everything, you you know, maybe you don't need Netflix for a year. Maybe you don't need to, you know, use, you know, the amazing Dove soap and use fucking, you know, store soap. (laughs) Like if, you know, this is now, when I hear that as another element now becomes a function of your expenses to live. If you can, you know, if you're going to put that burden, you know, because your wife's going to feel that burden. Now you want to look at everything, like look at every expense. Yeah. Okay, so I got some options to. You got a lot go of through. options. Yeah. Free internet yeah. learning, cutting expenses on dumb shit, eating shit. You got nothing but fucking options. Even when, for a lot of people, the beginning of this seemed like you had no options. You always got fucking options, people. Yeah, yeah. And I, that when I'm talking about that unhappiness, the toxic thing. Um, you definitely got to get out of there. You got to get out of there. I don't mind, a, you know, six more. Listen, I need, I, I'm like in third grade. I'm like, I got to get the fuck out of here. And I had to eat shit. I was unhappy for nine years. Yeah. On some yeah. real shit, brother. That's why you think I'm mad at schools for entrepreneurs and creatives because it's an ideology or I think it's funny or I like razzing. I hate negativity. I'm doing it because it leads to deep unhappiness for children. Yes. I was deeply unhappy. I'm like, oh, fuck, I gotta get out of here. Wait a minute, nine more years. You know, nine more months for you as a grown-up feels super easy for a kid that went through nine more years and he really meant it. I'm not trying to act cool now. It was deep unhappiness of being in that school system. I had nice teachers. It was just a fucking shitty world. You want me to memorize shit that means nothing? Yeah, and then, and then with, the, with uh, the piece with- Real quick, Jay, I apologize. Parents, yeah. please, if you have a creative kid or an entrepreneurial kid, I'm not saying let them drop out of high school. I'm not saying let them be a dick face. But I'm saying maybe take a little of the gas off the pedal of some ideology because you wish you went to a good college or your mom's big on education. Like, love your child. Deploy self-awareness yeah. and empathy. Yeah, that was a big piece of that fire too when I first started the the side business thing when I took it full time was I was like, people are, are, they have all this information on the table. They're not taking a look at it. I want to be, I want to almost evangelize I love that. that information. I love that. And take it to the masses. And I was all fired up. We're going to do this. And then, you know, life, life punches life. you. And, life. And then, and then the safety nets. Oh my and gosh. J- yep. Jay, them. and Jay, it is about gratitude, right? So, uh, child has some complications, scary as fuck. You know, the next day somebody's child was stillbirth or their spouse died in a car accident. Or like, life is life, bro. My mom yeah. lost her at five. My mom's the greatest mom in the world. Executed by a woman that didn't have a mother. Mm. Life. Yeah. Life, man. Yeah. I gotta bounce. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Good luck. Making some differences out here today, man. Tea with Gary V. I'm seeing you guys on social. I'm seeing you on social. By the way, anybody who signs up for Wine Text right now, please leave a comment so I give you a shout out that you just did. Fucking... I see your comments out there. People really feeling this format. Tea with Gary V, better than any education during quarantine. Thank you, Nerd Shirts. Shreds, excuse me. Fuck, let's keep going. Thanks, channel. Oh, Roberto, what's good, bro? Hey, what's up? Can you hear me, Gary? Oh, clearer than anybody else. You got a fucking whole system in there. You look like you're a fucking movie star, motherfucker. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. I'm hanging in there with everything that's going on. You know? Talk to me. It's been literally almost six years to the day since Ask Gary V episode 38, where you answered that question 
what's the biggest barrier to success, a lack of capital or a lack of time? And I think you remember what your answer was. You know what's funny? I don't know what my answer, I honestly don't know, Roberto, but you're gonna remind me. It's funny how you, you know, it's funny how we evolve over time. I, one more time, what's the biggest barrier to success or to, what was it? It was, what was the biggest, bar- what's the biggest barrier to success, a lack of time or a lack of capital? You know, listen, I value time over capital by a trillion miles, but it's a lack of self-esteem. You know what you said six years ago? You said it was a lack of optimism, which is tied directly to that self-esteem. I love it. Answer. Yeah. I love how consistent I am. Fucking yeah. love it. Exactly. But with that in mind yes. right now, like yes. with everything that's going on in the world right now, yes. not just with uh, Corona, but also just like Corona has done something that you talk about a lot is that these things don't change us, they expose us, right? Yes. This is exposed for a lot of people, the vulnerability of their situation, not just with the priority of their health, but with what their financial future is, their career, all these things, all these frameworks that they've invested in. Like the veil's been pulled back. Like the floor has been ripped out from under people, which is horrible, which is devastating. But it's affected people's self-esteem and it's also affecting even people like me who aren't necessarily directly negatively impacted. Like things are going well for me, thankfully, but like I'm watching other people go through and it's like hard even for me to maintain like optimism in the face of their pain. And then for them, I know that their entire self-esteem has been wrapped up in the identity of their job, of their career, of their earning potential, their certainty and like future, their ability to be optimistic has been predicated on this security that was an illusion and because like, people because people value money too much, bro. Yeah. Facts. Facts. Like, you know, you've watched me for a long time. We we know each other. Like I'm a you know, I keep going deeper and I'm like, oh shit. I'm gonna single handedly fucking reframe fucking success. Yeah. That dude that we had earlier, hopefully he comes back maybe tomorrow mm-hmm. or maybe Tuesday, because it sucks that I'm not on Friday, Monday, I'm gonna miss it too. Yeah. Um like like we need to reframe success, bro. That dude we is to. happy. That dude is happy. He's fucking delivering pizzas at 32 and he's clearly, it was, that's why I asked him. You know, I'm vibing. You know how I roll. I'm like, yeah. wait a minute, are you happy? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, bro, you fucking won. That's it. Like, but could you imagine, could you imagine if this created people wrapping their self-esteem in the fact that they're kind people and that they're happy, not that they make 180 a year and have a Beamer? Exactly so. You're you're a thousand percent right. Like the thing that like has made me the happiness is that I'm in a position to where it's like my younger siblings and my parents don't have to worry about like anything right now. That's awesome. Like with this chaos in the world, I've been able to protect. Like that's the thing that means the most to me, Gary, is that I'm able to protect people. <laughs> like, brother, I love you. Like it's it's all I know. I'm a fucking leader. Yeah. Put it on. Put it on me. Exactly. Like that's like, and you know, like I've like even since I was like a little kid, right? I always like kind of wanted to step up and to like do that and like help my mom after the divorce and all these things. But it's like I never had any quote unquote like real power. And then even when I was working, I was never making it up. But then when I became an entrepreneur, I could take control over everything because I could take responsibility for everything. But like how like that's a situation that like I was able to create over a, a period of time, like what what is something more, how do we help more people? Like how do people that are in the position you or I am in right now help people to shift this framework? Because right now I know the obsession is they, they see the writing on the wall, but right now what they're staring down the barrel of is survival and By speak- uncertainty. Two ways to help, speaking truth and financially helping. Mm-hmm. Black and white and gray. Nope. Maybe. Literally. When this was, you know, three weeks ago, I'm like, uh-oh. First things I did was hit up Lou and Sid and said, we're buying masks at a premium price right now because by the time yeah. all this shit comes from China, these next three weeks are gonna suck. So I know I can buy them for 80 cents, but let's buy tens of thousands at four bucks and we're gonna donate them to New Jersey and New York hospitals. Mm-hmm. Second thing I did was start a tea with Gary V. Yeah, no, a thousand percent. Like this is the And by the way, not everybody can afford to do what I did on, on the personal side, yes. but, we, but everybody can do what I'm doing right now. Right. So like something I've been trying to do with my content is I've been trying to gear more people up toward freelancing because the world hasn't completely shut down because there's still like land grabs right now in terms of cash and carry of like, and the thing is- Oh, there's real opportunity. Yeah. There's real, oh, Roberto, all this, listen, brother, 
this is just exposing. Like I've always said, like you brought up already on yeah. this call, winners are winning more. Truth. Like, truth. I mean, I've been... Like, VaynerMedia is on the attack. Yeah. Like, I'm on the attack. I've got, I've got my 15 top executives with me, all on Zoom, all in our LinkedIn's, reaching out to anybody we've ever fucking crossed paths with, because we're a fucking offense out here. I'm not dwelling about which customer can't pay me, or fucking is going to fire us because they can't afford anything anymore. I'm going after everybody else's fucking meat. Yeah. Facts. I'm going to eat. Because I'm a fuck, <laughs> because I'm a fucking AAA. What do you think for like people that like haven't quite gotten there yet? Like for the people who watch us, like right now, what do you think is like the most important thing somebody can do over the next 30 you, days? You, you know, because you used to watch me and then you started doing it. Right. Well, I it's, know, it's, like, called, it's called action. <laughs> Got you. It's like, fucking work it. ethic. Like, you know what's so crazy? You know, I'm heralded in 2008, 9, 10 for Crush It, Hustle, yep. because people were hurting and they needed some good energy to work hard. Mm -hmm. Then things got good and the last two years, I'm getting shit on for Hustle. You're yep, burning I people out, Garrett, right? You. You, you saw it, you're always in the trenches. I know you're watching. Oh, yeah. Guess what is about to become really cool next year? Hustle. I get it. Whether you want to call it hustle, that's a bad word now, fine. Let's call it hard work. Right. No, I've seen the coding. I've seen people with the language. I've seen the coded language play of like people. It's like, okay, we're going to demonize these words and everything like that with no context. And by the way, use these words that's right. Stand in. That's right. And it's fine. Listen, I know I've yeah. gotten bigger. I know, you know, I know how rap works, right? You try to battle the person that's bigger than you. I understand it all. I, it doesn't even bother me. I have a very funny feeling that work ethic is about to be put on a pedestal again. You know, everybody, when 10 years in, everyone's spending all their time work talking about work-life balance, and they yeah. should. Mental happy, you know, I'm the number one fan. I just told somebody who delivers pizza that you're the best. Yeah. I'm not about that money, I'm about, I'm about happiness. However, you know, work ethic's part of it. It is, in the sense that it's the thing like you've constantly said that people can control, and what you, can, you can't control right now what happened in the economy and all of these things and everything like that. What you can control is the opportunity to skill up, you can control the opportunity to reach out, you can control the Roberto, opportunity let me to value. Roberto, let me, let me make this very clear for you and everybody who's watching, and I think you know this. Yeah. What is about to happen is triple A's, because somebody asked what does that mean, winners mm -hmm. are about to super shine, Fake winners are about to burn to the ground. All those Instagram fucking entrepreneurs that were spending all their money to make pretend they were successful instead of spending time making themselves successful, they're gonna get annihilated. Yep. People are gonna have self-awareness moments where they're gonna realize their steez was a little bit bigger. They're gonna realize where they sit. It's a reset. And the most insecure and the people with the least mental foundation are gonna dwell and blame. A thousand percent. You're a thousand percent right. And you know what's interesting? You said it and it makes total sense is that right now, because when we're under threat, when things are happening, when we're under threat, you know what comes up? It comes, our insecurities comes out. You know, like that's the revealing thing of whatever we're insecure about. And we started, and, and we started admiring different things. That boss that was a little gruff but fucking held shit down who was like, not nice. All of a sudden, she's holding shit down and saving your job, and you're like, wait a minute, I like Karen. Yeah, she'd be a little rough once in a while, yeah. but I've got my job now because she fucking sold another account. We exactly. start admiring different things when things get scary. Exactly so. It's like, you want, like, you know what? Like, there are people who are, like, wartime leaders, and there are people who are peacetime leaders, and we've had a long period, we've had this bull market to where people have been very, like, I think even with some of the stuff with people coming after you is because, um, you might be a better wartime leader than a peacetime leader. And like, you know, it's easy to criticize somebody. Brother, I'm a great peacetime. fucking, and guess what? I'm a great fucking peacetime leader. What happened with me is I was getting so big that the people were looking for ways to build themselves up on fucking non-contextualizing what the fuck I say. And that's fucking facts. Mm-hmm. No, I've seen it. I've seen it. I've read the, I've read the headlines. <laughs> yeah, and listen, and by the way, I've got the fucking bravado, but like, no, like honestly, no animosity. Like I get it. Like it's all what it is. The truth always wins in the end. I don't care if the crowd's booing me. I don't care if my home tech man. I would be such a great fucking athlete. 
I would be so motivated if the other team went on a 12-0 run and the whole and the whole garden was booing on us. I'd be like, okay, I understand you, fan. And now I'm about to fucking drop 30 in this quarter to make you fucking cheer my fucking name. Well, that's why Rocky Three is your favorite Rocky. Is because um, in that when um, with Ivan Drago, like yep. when like everybody's booing four, Rocky Balboa. Four, 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 four. No, no, sorry, it's four. You're right. Yeah, go you're ahead. Like, why not? Super. That's all right. That's all right. But like, um, yeah, with Rocky Four where um you know he's in russia and everybody's booing him by the end he has half the crowd he's won them over purely on grit and on work on the results and the the fucking results bro i know how this story ends and and i want and honestly because i know 100 percent how this story ends i want everybody else to have a story too because i got love what, what I want and what I think you want too is I want people to start realizing this is the opportunity to write your own story because I think that people from their insecurity are being reactive right now. I think even criticism of other people is just being reactive about your own insecurity superimposing onto 100%. someone else to demonize instead of just doing the harder thing, which is keeping your mouth shut and saying, you know what, I'm going to focus on me and I'm going to focus on why is it I am upset with that person. I'm not upset with what they did. I'm upset with how I feel and I'm projecting something onto them. And so if you address that. Robert, Roberto. It's not fun to be held accountable. It's much more fun mm. to blame your alcoholic mother. It's so much more fun to blame the city you were born in. It's so to much more fun. To blame the government, to blame, yeah. Everything. Yeah. I, and by the way, that doesn't mean that those things aren't true. Correct. That, that doesn't, that's not a separate thing. It's my, I, I, to my dearest friends, like the people I care about the most that go into Dwell City. Gary, you, you, know, you, you know a little bit of my story, college. You know, 90% of my friends were African American, dealing with so many different issues than I was. Like, in those deep 4 a.m., drinking a bottle of, you know, drinking a fucking 40 of OE, when you're now family and you can go there, it's like, yo, I get it, bro. But nobody's gonna cry for you because they're crying about themselves. Like, you can spend the rest of your life dwelling that your dad left and that you get pulled over by the cops more than I do, and it's all true, and you're right, comma. What the fuck? And this is when you can be a real friend. What are we going to do about it? Exactly. And you know, the hard thing to accept of that is that it's more likely and more practical that you change than the environment and circumstances change on their own and get better on Racism, the racism, get racism is not going to get better in America to the ideal place we all want it before ever you die. There are periods of time where it gets worse. Like, uh-huh. you know, like right you now. You know, but, anti-Semitism exploding. Yeah, I've gotten more anti-Semitism in the last fucking three years, four years, five years than I did in my whole life. Yeah, they, I don't By do the way, by the way, and then real stuff happened. How about the man right before, the nice gentleman right before? You can be worried about all these macro issues and then your child can have a, like, life. And then that becomes irrelevant oh, very what, quickly. What about the fact that I can get hit by a bus? and die. Like, you, it's life. You're not in control of so much shit. Everyone spends all their time dwelling about what they're not in control of, this fantasy that you can control shit. Focus on what you can control. Get yourself fucking happy. So what happened for me was, um, like, and again, I grew up, like, you know, I grew up Catholic. I'm Panamanian, so I grew up Catholic. I, I, what happened for me is when, like, um, I constantly- Put Swami myself. back up. I Put Swami think, back up. I see it every fucking day that I'm in the fucking airport. Fuck that shit. Yeah. Like, and and, like, sw- and before that, nothing. And then 9-11 happens. And guess what? I'm sorry, bro. When I was growing my hair, I constantly got pat down because of my dreads and stuff bro, all the time. Bro, when I got my tan right and went serious on this shit, I, I, come on. Yeah, it happens all the time. Like, the thing that I learned is, is like, I realized. What about, like, what about the reverse game? Yeah. My, I'm watching my, my white friends cry because people are deploying p- privilege on them and this fucker grew up in a fucking trailer home. People don't know him. Nobody yeah. knows anybody. All we want to do is fucking judge. Why do you have fucking business? Worry about yourself. Just Stop like, telling other people how to fix themselves. Fix you. Here's what I can control and here's what I can't. Like Now the things that I can't necessarily control, the thing is if I work on myself, then am I later in a position to have an impact on that? So like if you care about a macro issue, the best thing that you could probably do is become powerful enough to address that macro issue. You do that by doing the micro Roberto, of yourself. Roberto, that's exactly what I'm doing. I want to change what young men think is success, specifically, and obviously young women too, but like yeah. I know what my demo, I know what's happening out there. It's actually, yeah. I think it's, you know, when we look at our numbers, it's 64, it's 65, 35. But, oh, nice. but, but, Young men yeah. who are impressionable and who want that lifestyle, I can fucking break them down. I've become mm-hmm. an alpha to them and now 
Do you know what it feels like to me, Roberto? And you're in the you're in the culture of tech and social, so I know you. Yeah. I know you've seen my impact. Yes. Twenty two year old saying gratitude. Twenty three. Like it's. I'm changing the fucking lexicon. You have. You've changed the language, the code, the lexicon. That you have. You've had an impact. It's not like it's not bravado to say that. It's like it's truth. It's it's truth. And I've seen the relevancy change in like, and not just because your numbers change, but I was there when you had twenty eight thousand subscribers. Like I was there when it's like Gary who. Like I remember when I couldn't pronounce your name. Like I remember it wasn't I know that know. long ago. No. Nope. So, but in the, in that short period of time, the impact that you've had. And the scale that you've had because you've reached outside of even the micro of like only business and entrepreneurial people and social media people used to watch. Dustin, put Kim Jacobs you're... post in here. Keep going, Robert. I'm sorry, but I want her and to get now this. There we go. You're like, and yes. now you're macro, beginning macro relevance to the average person. There are people who are not entrepreneurs who know who Gary Vaynerchuk is now. And that's a big deal Roberto, because every you're single change more. Every people. single fucking person on earth is going to know who the fuck I am. And I'm going to take that power and I'm going to do the goodest good good of fucking all time with it yeah i believe it i'm seeing it i've watched like there are people who say things like that and there then there are people who do it and i've been watching and like and you know and that's where why so many of us who have our own you know micro version of success all still look up to you still watch it's, even though we've quote unquote made it in the eyes of other people and it's why i still put you on shit like this because i want you to go to the next place and the next place and the next yeah. person and the next place it's all man it's all fucking it's all fucking gonna happen yeah and times like this, weed some shit out because there was some real fucking confusion of who the A's and who the F's were out there and you got caught in fucking yeah. pictures and videos. But shit's going to get real clean. Flex- yeah, I've seen it. It's like, like you know, it's about to get like, real clean. I'm, so, I'm so happy that people's priorities, like this is a bad thing that happened, but you have to take a circumstance. Yeah, I, like, look, yeah. look, this is devastating. People, people yeah. are dying. Yeah, straight You know, um, but people are dying every day about all sorts of things. But now we're going to, more of us are going to come together for one thing. More I people that. are going to shift their priorities. Like looking at what, look at what Jack just did with like, with what he just did and how he stepped up and everything like that. Look at like for all the crap he gets, look at Bezos. Bezos like, you know, went in a hundred million on that, 10 million people, on climate look, change. Listen, Roberto, people, people have made decisions about people without looking under the hood. Do you know how many people's spouses or best friends hate me and think I'm a snake oil salesman and full of myself and a piece of shit, but they've never spent 10 hours educating. Right. I would, you're, watch you're this. A snake oil salesman yeah, selling watch, false hope when right. all you do is tell people to work harder and you give it away for free. <laughs> <laughs> but what's amazing is like literally right now in the comments, everyone's like me, me, my, my sister, my brother, my wife, my husband, like everyone's like, he's a motivational speaker. You mean the one that's constantly built businesses his whole life, every minute that he's been a grown up and they've exploded and been the biggest in their craft? That guy? Yeah, like literally, it, it's like. That, that's cool, like the, that's cool. How much of that what are, they, is, what are they gonna say when I hold up a Super Bowl trophy as the New York Jets owner? What are they gonna say there? I got lucky? Yeah, like so people don't even realize something like this. Something people haven't reverse engineered and you've said it is you know that you have to make billions in order to buy the New York Jets, right? So then all of your actions are mapped to the vision that you have of the intention of being able to execute on that because like there's a whole pathway of everything you have to do. Do you realize how much value, you know this, but the people in the audience don't realize this. People think that being a billionaire is luck or scummy or you step on people to do that and everything like that. The only real way aside from inheriting money and leaving it to get compound interest would be you'd have to serve millions of people at a high enough level of value in order to generate billions of dollars because everything, at least in the world of capitalism, is transactional. So it's impossible to actually scam your way to billions. and, And for me, what's really funny about it is the the effort behind it in a good way. That's why the Honey Empire, that's why we call, you know, I'll probably yeah. write that book like about Vayner. Like mm-hmm. we're doing it in such a good way and we're winning. Like there's a, that, you know, this was always my problem with Steve Jobs. That reputation mm. that you have yeah. to be a dick to be Steve Jobs led to, I watched my friends as Steve's career exploded. I watched my friends in Silicon Valley become dicks. Mm-hmm. And that, that's, what's, that's what probably etched in my brain, Roberto, of me going ham on who I actually am around, co- you know, Roberto, what you had the luxury of knowing that has become a little more obvious in the last two years because of how my content's unfolded, or the last four years with DRock and vlogging, you can get a little bit deeper, you can see nuances. 
you kind of already knew that I was a nice person. Yes. I'm an aggressive communicator, which makes all the people that are in here, like my girlfriend, my brother, yeah, all that. I get it. I understand. I'm empathetic. I grew up around to around military dudes, so I could parse that. Like, yeah, you. Seconds, that so it was easy for you. Yeah. But you also knew the truth of my humanity. Yes. But but and I kind of held that back the same way. Like like even that it was actually uncomfortable for me to say about the mass things earlier. I was like, oh, why did I say? That? Like it's really. It's, I don't talk about my nonprofit world that much. I underpromote Pencil the Promise and charity. It. Yeah. I don't talk about any of the philanthropic things I do. I don't like publicly tweet out my donations to this thing or that thing with the exception of Team Trees because I wanted more people to yep, do it. And yep, so I'm yep. reconsidering that as an inspiration. I, I just think like, it's a, I think it's important that people know that you can be a millionaire, and I hate that term, but this is exactly what I'm gonna say. That you can be a millionaire doing it the right way and being kind. And I don't yes. and I think that we got to a place in culture when people didn't believe that. And I wanna put that on my and 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 then comma because that's for one group. Yes. I, I want a whole. I want. I I, I want everybody to know that thirty six thousand dollars a year happy is winning in life. It is like how much do you think? How much do you think that like some of the people not believing things is style over substance? Meaning there are people who like either like one like the Steve Jobs being a dick thing. Stylistically though, like he to the masses seemed like, you know, one way, but then in the micro relationships, it's known that he was like another yeah. way. And so it looked good to be yeah. Steve Jobs, but Christop then to it's Christopher the style Colum of how you I, communicate. I, in my, yeah, I call it Christopher Columbus. Mm. We loved Christopher Columbus in this world until about 20 years ago. Right. I, you know, I'd rather be respected long after I'm gone than right now. I think it, I mean, it matters. Like it really- It matters to me. And I very much pick up on the argument from other people and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? But like, no, I want to be happy that. now. And I'm like, I understand. What makes me happy mm -hmm. is building a legacy that is admired the end. Well, doing everything again. You, you're intentional. You're doing things again for thinking about the funeral and thinking after how you're gone and thinking about how people talk to you about it. Because again, it's like, you know, like Steve Jobs kind of got it at the end and had regrets about like the concept. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be the guy. treated people. I don't want to be, I don't want to vent this. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I admire him tremendously. I'm not shitting on somebody's past. I just don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I think that people have a problem reconciling their ambition versus their attitude because how you, how you play the game matters. And the thing is we're, we're, we're aggressively in a culture and taught in a culture, but I think that's from scarcity. I think from scarcity, people have a, zero-sum game mentality, a win at all costs. I think, that's, I think that's why people even demonize successful people in the industry, demonize them because bro. they think that you could only have won if it was at my expense or the expense of someone like me. Roberto, Roberto, I've built 5,000 agencies mm -hmm. because I put out so much free content and decks. People have built agencies I, on I new packaging. I, I know, I know tons of people who've done it. I believe in abundance. I believe in love. I think on a long enough. I gotta go, Roberto. I got a fucking yeah, important exactly. client call. Oh, this absolutely. was too much fun. I love you. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Thanks talk so much for having me. Man. Talk to you. Happy soon. to happy to have you, Roberto. Right. Uh, Dustin, thank you for being on the ones and twos. Yes, sir. These episodes, huh? So somebody say this is like a mini podcast. We're like doing it, like we're doing it, doing it, doing it well. Yeah, it's cool. Do you know what that reference was? No. <laughs> Read the comments. Doing it, doing it, doing it well. You don't know, you young fuckers. Some OGs. <laughs> Tell them what it is. There it is. That LL Cool J. Oh. Fucking yeah, good I don't, dude. I don't All right. know Mama said to knock you out. <laughs> Which is way older. Anyway, I appreciate everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Please take a screenshot of this right now. Please sign up for Wine Text. We go out in an hour. Uh, an uncanny Chardonnay for under 20 bucks. This is a, my one commercial during tea time for my pops. I will never forget for my pops. It would mean the world to me, and I mean the actual world to me, that if you buy wine on the internet or if you buy wine, that you sign up for winetext.com. The best deals you'll ever see. I work on them every day with my best friend, Brandon. Um, and Empathy Wines, the winery I started, um, that is, it's really fun to be in, back to my roots, sports cards and wine. But Wine Text is bonkers, one deal a day. Today's a super famous Chardonnay. Like the kind that you see on the restaurant list for a hundred bucks for 19 bucks and change. Like you should buy a case and drink it all summer. See ya.
Okay, so Team Gary has made a lot of content over the years, but what's your favorite piece of content that was made? That's a great question. My favorite content by far is, I'm considering doing a Vayner Media Operations stay at home day once a week forever, because I'm, I'm pretty sold that I've gotten more done per day than sometimes in a month.